Okay, let's look at another acid catalyzed hydrolysis reaction. Let's look at it, the amide hydrolysis. Now, this reaction is very similar to the ester hydrolysis, um, but it's different. Hey, if it weren't if it weren't different, we'd just call it another ester hydrolysis, but it's not. It's an amide. Now, I'm going to write the reaction in general. All these R groups do not have to be carbon groups. They can actually be hydrogens as well. Depends on the substitution of the amide. But if we treat this with water and sulfuric acid, like any acid derivative, we will get the carboxylic acid. And the final product will actually be an amine. And we'll see some implications on whether this reaction is, is reversible or not because we use an amine. So let's... Uh, always go with a nice simple structure for our model reaction. We will treat this with sulfuric acid and water and that will give us hydronium as our operational acid and as always when we under acid catalysis we start with protonating something, protonate the carbonyl. Remember that nitrogen, it's so tempting and it looks nice and basic because it has this lone pair, but that lone pair is doing resonance with the carbonyl. So the most basic position is actually the carbonyl oxygen. Once we protonate our carbonyl, we have a strong electrophile. So we can use our weakly nucleophilic water to attack that. And if you compare this side by side with the ester hydrolysis mechanism, it looks identical to this point. It's going to continue looking identical because water is going to pluck off that hydrogen, which is exactly what we did in the uh, ester hydrolysis reaction. Now our goal is to have this as a leaving group. So we need to make it a better leaving group. We're going to protonate it. Again, we have acid floating around all over the place. We can protonate. That gets us to here. Now we have a much better leaving group and Again, this doesn't just leave, it actually gets helped out by one of those lone pairs. If those lone pairs weren't there, this reaction wouldn't work. So I like to involve them in the reaction. And then we have one last step. You know, you can kind of argue about what happens. Tell you what, let's try to be more proper about this. This amine, once we form it, is probably our best base. No probably about it. It certainly is our best base. And this is really our product under acidic conditions. Now, because in this reaction, we form, as expected, we form our carboxylic acid from, in the upper left, our acid derivative amide, and we also lose the group that was an extra group that was attached to the carbonyl. The thing is, under acidic conditions, this nitrogen is, it's protonated. So since it's protonated, it's not nucleophilic. It doesn't have a lone pair. So if you think, well, I, I just want to make the amine. To get that amine, you're going to have to deprotonate that nitrogen with some base. So th this amine can't go back and attack the, if you want to say, well, oh, this all ought to be reversible, just like the ester. And so you think it should be reversible. It is not reversible because our amine doesn't exist as the free amine. It exists as the ammonium ion. And that is, is not a nucleophile. So the acid catalyzed hydrolysis of, of an ester is reversible. And we have a name for that reaction. We call it the Fischer esterification. The acid catalyzed hydrolysis of an amide is not conveniently reversible. To reverse it, you got to you just got to heat the daylights out of stuff and it, it in general it just doesn't work very well. So, this is a difference between uh, amides and esters and it's really all about the basicity of that amine product doesn't make it participate in the reverse reaction.